Morning to you all. Thank you, Ila, and thank you, Lord Provis. So I'm really delighted to be here. This is my first attendance at the Community Heritage Conference. There's a great range of talks and workshops, and I think it's going to be a really great day. So um, I've only been in post two weeks, and I was prior to that, I was at Museums Gallery Scotland for 10 years. And during that time, I did work with many community heritage projects. So I've long been aware of the profound importance of cultural heritage to people and the critical role that communities play in recording, interpreting, and protecting their historic environment. And personally for me, this has actually been really satisfying, but also a really inspiring part of my work. So in my assessment um, of the work here during in the last two weeks, um, I really feel I've come to an organisation that understands the importance of bringing heritage into communities and the annual support for this conference is an example of this and um, it's just one of the ways that HES can turn good intentions into actions. I'm really impressed at the range of work being carried out and I'm looking forward to hearing more, not just from my new colleagues but from the other great projects that are being presented during the course of today. So what I'm going to do in the rest of this talk is just provide a bit of flavour about some of the work that HES undertakes, but also set out a few thoughts for the conference today. So a quick look through our annual operation operating plan will demonstrate the many ways in which we're advising, upskilling and funding community initiatives. And this comes under the enabling role we've adopted from our place and time, Scotland's Historic Environment Strategy. And strengthening communities is one of our key deliverables against which the organisation's performance can be measured. As a public body, HES has certain duties and expectations under the Community Empowerment Act, and I'm determined that we'll continue to go beyond the minimum as an organisation who's committed to sharing with as many people as possible the benefits that the historic environment can provide. In reflecting on how HES supports communities, it's clear that many do this in different ways and we're involved in projects ranging from Scotland's first settlers to the very recent past, um, such as our interesting work recording contemporary graffiti. We work the length and breadth of Scotland in towns and in countryside and we support communities in everything from recording archaeology and the built environment and producing interpretations and exhibitions to using traditional skills to conserve buildings and places. But we also have an important role in empowering communities to take over the running of assets and also in the community ownership of them. And of course we have an army of volunteers who play a vital role in running the properties and care that we look after on behalf of Scottish Ministers. So the Community Empowerment Act places high expectations on our organisation, but I've found that that's been met with enthusiasm and commitment as far as our staff are concerned. So our current What's Your Heritage initiative, which you can find out more about, a bit of advanced advertising, first thing tomorrow, um, is a good example where instead of assuming we know best, we went out and asked a cross-section of people in Scotland what was important to them and how we can make informed decisions <coughs> about what to do going forward. We're currently in the second phase of What's Your Heritage? So there are events happening at the moment, which some of you might be attending. And we're taking that forward to help learn and shape and plan the future. And as well as our pool of experts in HES, we recognise it's a massive resource of community experts out there who have so much to contribute and often from a different perspective. And it's my hope going forward that we can build these relationships further ensuring that we can together provide a well-rounded and in-depth understanding and informative offering of the past. So Scotland's Urban Past, um, the, there's presentations on that today, is another project that we're very proud of which recently passed its halfway point and features, as I said, various presentations in this conference. So it follows on from its highly successful predecessor, Scotland's Rural Past. So Scotland's urban past is designed to enable communities to tell the project what they want to do rather than the other way around. And this has resulted 
in young skateboarders recording and entering in the national record, the Veni Skate Park in Livingston, and the Magic Torch, where primary school children created a fabulous comic about the ghost chain, which ran from Greenock through Port Glasgow. So Scotland's urban past further challenged itself to ensure that a third of projects undertaken are led by groups that don't focus on the historic environment. And this has created some inspirational initiatives, for example, with Glasgow Disability Alliance, who produced maps, interviews, and a film featuring places that matter to them. When Scotland's urban past was being devised, we we're conscious that the success of the project was reliant on communities coming to us. And we're delighted by the response and feel this has become the norm. So HES will build on the experience from Scotland's urban past and other initiatives to spread the joy of heritage. But there can't be heritage without people, and access to heritage will always be at the centre of our work. And it's fantastic events like this that we can all come together and ensure that we drive the call for accessibility for all. So we've also been influenced by the Equalities Act, which broadens the reach of our organisation and involving a wider spread of people in our work is high on our agenda. And it's not just the groups defined in the Equalities Act, but a much wider and deeper socioeconomic reach. It's everyone's historic environment and heritage. And no matter what the circumstances, our heritage can enrich everyone's life. So this is why I'm, I'm very keen personally that any legislation that impacts on communities and heritage is transparent and clear for all to understand and work from. So with such amazing work happening, I think it's really important to actively acknowledge the achievements of communities and individuals working for the benefit of the historic environment. So events such as the Scottish Heritage Angel Awards highlight the spread of community-based work that's happening around the country and the dedication of people and local groups involved. So these awards were presented last month and I'm sure we'll hear more over the weekend about some of the projects that were nominated. So as the Lord Provost has talked about, Scotland really is an international leader in meaningfully involving communities and empowering people by showing how we record things, or to conserve buildings um, and places. And HES provides a range of grants to enable research and conservation work to happen. And this is often driven by community-based initiatives. And in my short time with the organisation, I'm impressed by the scope and the extent of the work, and I'm sure that there'll continue to be growth in this area. So in terms of historic buildings, we intend to go even further than in the past, as well as maintaining the buildings at risk register. We're putting together resources that will help inform communities about how they can preserve and maintain buildings that are under threat of demolition or decay, or take over the running or ownership of assets. And we intend to provide advice and encouragement to give community groups whatever level of assistance they need in order to achieve their ambitions. So at this point, I, I want to acknowledge um, others who've actually made this conference happen today. So including our co-funder, Glasgow City Council, Archaeology Scotland as co-organisers, but along with the many others from the historic environment sector of community groups to local authorities, commercial and charitable companies to public bodies. This is just a really great example of everyone pitching in to make a special event that benefits us all. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge colleagues that are here today from elsewhere in the UK and from much further afield from Finland, Bulgaria and the USA. So we're, we're really proud of the work we do in Scotland, but there's always the opportunity to learn from others. And I'm sure there'll be great opportunities to develop partnerships or even to share ideas over the course of the weekend. So as we reach the end of this year of history, heritage and archaeology, of which this conference has a role in celebrating, it's fitting for communities, professionals and academics in Scotland and much further afield to get together, share their experiences, show off what we've achieved and to devise new projects and form new collaborations for the future. So as I say, I'm really looking forward to hearing these stories and to listen to what people have to say about HES and how others 
can learn and build on our successes. And in many ways, I'm really privileged to be here at the end of week two. So many of you can shape my thinking at the moment as well. So we operate on the basis of heritage for all. And these are not just words to live by, but a, ma a measurement of our actions. We should be enablers for all people and all communities, forming partnerships and sharing in the end goal of preserving, protecting, understanding and valuing the historic environment and all it has to offer this generation and the next. So at the end of this day, I hope this event, um, I hope that through this event we can help to ensure more people are able to benefit from our wonderful historic environment. And I'm eager to find out more about the community heritage work that's taking place across the country and I'm really looking forward to being part of this event. Thank you.